This is Deborah Atkinson, and you're listening to Flipping With Me, where I address your top questions and struggles. I share what to eat, how to move, and how to think to get the energy and the vitality that you want in this second and better half. And my guest today in this episode is somebody I am very confident that you are familiar with, and I am so excited to have him here. Mark Middleton, founder and CEO of Boulder Broadcasting and Growing Boulder, is a media entrepreneur, television journalist, author, filmmaker, speaker, activist, and consultant who focuses on the changing culture of aging. A multiple Emmy award-winning broadcaster, Mark is the host of Growing Boulder TV, seen on public broadcasting stations nationwide, co-host of Growing Boulder Radio, CEO of Growing Boulder Press, publishers of Growing Boulder Magazine, and director of the Emmy-nominated documentary film, Conquering Kilimanjaro. Mark is a seven-time master swimming world record holder and a 10-time U.S. master swimming national champion. His new book, Growing Boulder, Defy the Culture of or The Cult of Youth, Live with Passion and Purpose, is now available on Amazon. Mark, thanks so much for being here today. Well, thank you, Deborah, and my apologies for all of that. Uh, you know, that's, uh, <laughs> uh, it's, it's a bit obnoxious, and I apologize that we sent you all of that stuff. Well, I was just thinking, you know, that first paragraph, this is interval training. I got to take a breath here. There you, you go. a <laughs> Uh, I have done a lot, and I, I seem to do more every year. I think the only regret that I have is that I didn't start what I'm doing now earlier in my life, but uh, it is certainly keeping me active and engaged, and I'm enjoying every moment of it. Well, and pardon my manners, but this is so very relevant for our audience. How old are you? Uh, I will be uh, 68 in uh, two days. Awesome. Well, early happy birthday. Appreciate and, that. And you mentioned you wish you would have started earlier, which was really my first question. So I I couldn't tell you, I can tell you for as long as I've really been tuning into this market, and that's really only about six or seven years niching with Flipping 50. How long has Growing Boulder been in existence? And what inspired you in the first place that it started? Well, I appreciate that. And feel free to interrupt me at any time, because as you'll see, uh, Deborah, I'm very passionate about what I do. And uh, before I say that, I just want to say thank you for having me on your program. I'm a fan of what you do. Uh, and, and we are definitely uh, swimming in the same pond and, and delivering a very similar message. So uh, I admire what you do and I appreciate uh, being on. I was well, a. I'm going to uh, interrupt you right there just yeah. to say that, you know, I don't think it's fair that you mentioned swimming and then you can say seven time and 10 time. So we're not necessarily swimming uh, at the same time, but go ahead. <laughs> well, you know, we're going to jump around. I can tell with our personalities uh, now that we're on the swimming and I'll get back to your original question. I didn't swim for 35 years. I was not in the pool one time uh, from the time I graduated to college until 35 years later. And I was so inspired by people that we do stories on that I just decided to get back into the water, uh, mostly just kind of for my own health and to deal with the stress of building a business. I had no intention intention of competing at all. And, and in a weird way, when I did start to compete, I was stunned that my times were nearly as fast as they were in college. And, and I, you know, I try to rationalize everything. And I think one of the reasons for that is that I didn't experience this gradual decline year after year and month after month and, and lose focus and everything. I came back 35 years later and my mindset, it was exactly where it was, you know, three decades before I expected to be as fast as I was 35 years before. And I almost was. And, you know, that's a large part of what we do at Growing Boulder is, uh, you know, we talk about, uh, you know, the, the power of belief and, uh, you know, what the mind believes the body embraces, our psychology drives chills. our physiology. Okay. Yeah. So I'm anyway. getting chills because I <laughs> recently interviewed Dr. Ellen Langer. Is that uh -huh. right now? Uh, no, I, I, we've had her on our radio show a couple of times, and I yep. love, to love to refer to, to, to some of her studies. Yep. So good. All right. I'm stopping interrupting. No, Stop no. Feel free anytime. Uh, I was a, uh, a local news guy. I uh, was the um, sports director for the NBC station in Orlando for – 20 years. I anchored the six and 11 o'clock news weekdays. And then I moved to, uh, or sports. And then I moved to news and anchored the news. And, um, 
it's, uh, local news changed, and uh, it doesn't make any difference what city you're in. If you're listening to this, you'll know that your local news changed, you know, 10 or 15 years ago because the business model changed. And I got into sports and news because I like to tell stories, and I've always believed, naively so, that news should be as much about what happens that's good in a community as what happens that's bad. And, you know, when all of a sudden there was cable news everywhere and there was online news Uh, Local news became hyper-local. There wasn't as much money to be made. And the only way to continue to fill the ever-expanding news hole, you know, it was just 6 o'clock and then 5 o'clock and then 4 o'clock, was to, uh, you know, not really produce enterprise journalism, but to, you know, what everybody did is they became a nightly crime report. They they, they took the cops' uh, mug shots, and uh, I just didn't like that. So, uh, I was always looking for what was going to be next for me. And at the time, the station shared with me their market research. And I looked at the market research and I, the, one thing jumped out to me immediately. And that was, what's your name? What's your age? And if the age was over 55, they literally discontinued the interview. And I, and I said, wait a minute, the average age of the viewers of our station, of really every local station in America is 57. Now you're telling me that you don't care about the opinions of the people who watch your news. And they said, no, that's not what we're telling you. We're telling you advertisers don't care about them. So I spent a year, you know, kind of becoming an amateur demographer and uh, reading and learning as much as I could about the aging of America and and about how everything that we thought about aging was changing and uh, about how there is now this entirely new life stage that consists of two, three, and sometimes even four decades of active life beyond what's considered normal retirement age. And it wasn't just that there was going to be more old people. But it was going to be more older people, not just with money, but with ambition. It was going to be less about things and more about experience. And nobody was paying any attention to this. And I thought, you know, this is a huge oversight. I'm going to quit. Uh, And I did. I I knew the name was going to be Growing Boulder. I knew the brand that I wanted to build. And I just had a heart to heart with myself and said, you know, Growing Boulder is about taking risk. It's about realizing what's important in life. It's about chasing your dreams and pursuing your passions. And if I can't do it, how can I ever inspire anybody else to? So I literally went upstairs and quit, uh, not having an idea of, of how I was going to, to do what I did. And uh, it, it took me a year and a half to put together enough money to start hiring people and start building the business. But you know, this was back in 2008. And then the economy fell out, uh, or the bottom fell out of the economy. And uh, you know, we learned to bootstrap, you know, early on, and we've just kept our, our nose to the grindstone and focused on the mission. And uh, and I think, to be honest with you, Deborah, next year is going to be a very interesting and exciting year for, my, for us because uh, I think we've reached that tipping point, thanks in large part to people like you. And people are starting to understand, you know, what life can be like uh, in our later years. I so agree. And I, I don't want to forget, I've got so many questions for you, but you have some really exciting projects coming up, which are also things we want to make sure that we mention. And so I want to, let's kind of stay on our groove here, answer these questions, and then make sure we promise we'll come back to that. I mean, so you alluded to the mindset, you know, getting people to think about it or paying attention to the way that people are already beginning to think about that no one else is. So are you more invested in mindset or also pay attention to physical changes and you're supporting that through going global? Uh, you know, we're, we've expanded our mission. We, uh, for years, have primarily, uh, you know, focused on what we do best, and that's tell stories of ordinary people living extraordinary lives uh, and trying to provide the inspiration for people to understand that more is is possible, that the boundaries of what's possible as we age have been you know, inaccurately drawn by a very ageist society. Uh, as we've grown, we've realized that uh, we need to deliver the tools and the resources to help people convert that inspiration into action, that we were only, you know, working on half of the equation if we didn't provide the other thing. So, uh, you know, that's, you know, you mentioned our projects. We won a national contest last year with PBS. They had, for the first time ever, it was something called Pitch Fest Live, and you had to enter an idea for a new uh, national pledge program. And uh, there's a chapter in my book called Launchpad to What's Next, which, you know, I started uh, kind of talking about when I was consulting with um, retirement communities is saying, you know, I think you guys have got it all wrong. Uh, the age in market to retirement communities 
isn't interested in winding down. They're interested in what's next. You need to, you know, provide them not just shuffleboard, but you need to help them figure out how to build business models, how to learn how to use Photoshop, how to learn how to start a blog, how to learn how to, uh, you know, leverage the gig economy. This is this is what we're looking for. So we pitched this idea for a show called Launchpad to What's Next, and and we won. And uh, so now our show will debut in December. And as part of that, we're building an online portal that will be unlike anything that PBS has ever done in that uh, everybody that pledges will have access to this portal uh, where they will be able to download tools and resources and worksheets and uh, functional fitness and uh, healthcare and caregiving and travel and, you know, finance, all the things that are uh, of interest to, to people in our demographic. So great. Okay. So now you've got to do some name dropping. Oh. I mean, the guest was an all-star team. So let's, let's go from the top. Well, well, thank you for that. You know what? It's, we didn't, we, we didn't win enough money to, 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 to go crazy. And um, I reached out to people, many of whom uh, are used to being paid fifteen, twenty thousand $20,000 to speak for an hour and, and told them, hey, we can't pay you. Uh, you know, we, well, here's what we're going to do. Here's the vision. Here's why we think it's going to be important. Uh, if you want to be a part of it, that would be cool. We would love it. If you don't want to, I understand it. And uh, so I reached out to about 15 people I know. And within two days, 10 of them got back to me and said, I'm in. And we didn't have room for the 10. So, um, but yeah, it was, uh, Diana Nyad was on and she was amazing. I have, you know, she, she just talked about, uh, you know, her passion for doing what she did. I think she was 64 when, when she did her swim. Rowdy Gaines, three-time Olympic gold medalist, who's great. Bill Thomas is a guy who is credited with totally transforming uh, the uh, assisted living and caregiving industry. He came up with something called uh, the Eden Project years ago, and then he invented the Greenhouse Project, and now he's off to creating small homes for older people. Very clever guy. Dr. Roger Landry, who wrote the book Live Long, Die Short, who's an expert on compressed morbidity. Uh, Barbara Hannah Grufferman wrote the book uh, The Best of Everything After 50. Um, I, I know I'm missing a couple of oh, Dan Butner, who is the founder of the Blue Zones, Gene Chatsky, who's the uh, financial editor for NBC. So all of these people contributed. And, you know, so it's a, it's a different kind of a show. And we recorded it in front of a live audience and everybody came out. And I, I said, listen, you guys are used to talking for an hour and getting paid twenty thousand dollars. You've got seven minutes and you're not going to get paid anything. And and they all they all just crushed it. And so it was uh, it was a lot of fun and it worked out so well that we're turning it into uh, a national tour. We took it from there to Albuquerque and did it live. Uh, we didn't videotape it like we did the first one for broadcast, took it to Albuquerque and we uh, we uh, presented it at the National Senior Games in a historic theater in downtown Albuquerque. And again, it was a sellout and uh, it was just tons of fun. So it's a message that it's a message that resonates. You know, people are are curious about what's next. We're, we're, we want to do more and we're, we are concerned about having the tools and resources to make it happen. I love it. Yes. And curious about it. And we want so much to have a positive message. I mean, I think that's why, you know, when you're on social media, everything that you put out there is shared and shared. I mean, it's what people want to get behind. It's what they want to believe if they don't yet believe it. It's what they want other people around them to believe if they do believe it. And it, it's amazing. So applause, applause to you. Let's talk a little bit about marketing and yeah, I mean, you're among the minority still, even today, I think, of positive examples of marketing. So if somebody, and I've done this very recently, done social media marketing for fitness professionals and trying to pull great examples of marketing to older adults is really a hard thing. So talk a little bit about it, given your background. I mean, what have you seen evolve? Are we well, getting better yeah. at doing this? Um, you know what I think one of the problems is, and I won't get into this whole deal because there's books about it, but the average age of the people in most, you know, media companies, public relations, advertising agencies is 28. And, you know, th they just don't really have 
a, a clue about what interests us and, and, and how, to, how to motivate us. And, and as you know, Deborah, the thing about I, I never use other than in a context like this, we don't ever say the word baby boomer, uh, you know, consumer facing. If I'm talking to an advertiser, we'll talk about that. But what we're doing has nothing to do with any specific demographic cohort. It has everything to do with a new life stage that, uh, as I said before, has never before existed and will exist for all time. So in 30 or 40 years from now, you know, when, 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 uh, you know, millennials are, uh, turning 70, uh, you know, th- they'll be doing the same kind of things that we're talking about. Uh, the, the baby boomer demographic is is the most diverse demographic that has ever lived, uh, at least to this point. And, uh, and, and as you know, there are a lot of people that uh, uh, it's rich, it's poor, it's, it's black, it's white, it's obese, it's fit, it's rural, it's urban. It's as different as it can be. So there really is no one size fits all when you are marketing to people. And, and I know it's difficult for people to, 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 to wrap their brains around this. The, the one thing that I've learned more than anything else in terms of creating content that, will, that appeals to people is that when we can see ourselves in others, that's when the magic of personal transformation can occur. People are smart. They know what advertising is. That you can't be fooled. Uh, 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 you can't fool a 50 or 60 year old. They, they know what advertising is. But literally, and I do mean this literally, when we can see ourselves and others, and you know, one of the examples that I love to give, and there's a million of them, but you know, when I give a talk, I, I show a slide of Ida Keeling, who was a 101-year-old African-American woman who broke the world record in the 100-meter dash uh, at the Penn Relay several years ago, and it was videotaped. I was on TV, and a video of that went viral, and it was seen by uh, Ella Mae Colbert, a 101-year-old woman living in South Carolina, who said, you know what, if Ida Keeling can do it, maybe I can do it. Uh, she hadn't run since she was a young girl, and she went to the middle school track behind her house. Uh, the Guinness Book of World Record was there, and she beat Ida's time by uh, 17 seconds. And that video went viral. And guess who saw that? That was seen by Julia Hurricane Hawkins, a 101-year-old woman living in Louisiana who destroyed that record. And Julia Hawkins is now 103. And we ran into her in Albuquerque recently. And you probably saw her all over the news. Uh, she made worldwide news when she uh, you know, ran and became the oldest uh, athlete, uh, female athlete to compete in organized track and field. And it's because they saw themselves and others. So that's really what we try to do when we tell stories is, you know, we try to find people of all uh, shapes and sizes. My interest in the national senior games, we cut a deal with them. We were going to come and do content. And I said, I'm could not care less who gets first, who gets second, or who gets third. Uh, I want to tell the story about the uh, uh, the seventy year old woman that's overcoming a stroke, the the sixty year old man who's trying to lose weight, the hundred year old that never started doing anything till they were ninety six. Um, I, you know, those are the kind of stories we look for, and that's that's what works. You know, to tell editorial kind of stories about as many different people as you can. So it's hard for people to that aren't a media company to figure out how to do that. But that's what has worked for us. Yeah, so love that. Last year, just on a fluke, I went to the what's called the World Huntsman Games in St. George. And I virtually did the same thing. I just walked around and talked to people. And there the stories there are amazing and rich. So so okay though. We've got inevitably, we've got somebody listening who who maybe is out there thinking, you know, I'm feeling my age, you know, and that is great for, you know, somebody else, 104, 101, but you know, that's an anomaly and that's ne- not necessarily what I see for me. What do you say to a listener who's right now, they're, they're feeling their age. Where's the best place to start? Not, not anti-aging, because I don't think either one of us are for that, but optimal aging. No, it's a great question. And let me just preface what I'm going to say, whatever that's going to be with, uh, you know, I work really hard whenever we talk because people want to jump to that conclusion that we're 
telling stories that are not possible for other people. And, you know, uh, you know, I always say we're not ignoring the reality of, of our mortality. You know, we're not pretending that bad things don't happen to good people. We're not pretending that, you know, we will all experience a period of decline as we age. You know, that, that, that's part of the deal, part of being a human being. But it has been proven uh, without exception. And again, bad things can still happen to good people. There are no guarantees. Uh, but if you engage in positive of lifestyle modification, uh, you may not live longer, but you will definitely compress your morbidity. The period of, de- of decline and disability and disease at the end of your life will be, you know, shortened uh, a-, a whole, whole lot. And again, before I answer your question, now I'm looking at the whiteboard in my office and it says growing bolder is not all things to all people. It's an inconvenient truth to many. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not proud that we have that up there, but that's something that we have learned. There are some people that do not want to be motivated. They they don't want you to tell them, uh, you know what, you, it's not over. Uh, you, you can still do this. They, they, it, life to them has been a struggle. Uh, they put in their time. They don't want the stress of feeling like they've got to do more. And, and so we, 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 we talk real hard about the fact it's not all about physical movement, as important as it is. Uh, it, it's, it, it, it's just about understanding uh, that a moment at 90 is every bit as valuable as a moment at 19. And how you spend that may be entirely different. You know, one of the things I've learned from talking to you know, caregivers and presenting at caregiving conferences all over the country is that even in the most advanced stages of, uh, of dementia, uh, these people still have the ability, uh, to, uh, experience love and joy. Uh, they still have the ability. The only ability they still have is to live in the moment. And that's what we're all trying to do anyway. So to answer your question, uh, in a circuitous way, uh, you know, I tell people, you know, you don't have to do a lot, but you have to get started. Get, getting started is what hurts people. When I got back into swimming, I, I made one rule. Uh, I eliminated the option not to. My alarm goes off at 4.45, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday morning, and I swim outdoors uh, at 5 o'clock. I don't care if it's pouring down rain. I don't care if it's 34 degrees. I don't care anything. I, I, I never hit the snooze button. I never delay. I get up and I go to the pool. There have been many days when I'm the only one that shows up because it's pouring down rain and I have to turn around and come home. But the upside of that is 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 that I'm I'm there more than anybody else simply because I've eliminated the option not to. And I think that's one of the keys when people are trying to to get moving. It's an unfortunate fact of life that it's easier to get addicted to negative things than it is positive things. But the addiction to positive things is every bit as strong, if not stronger, if you can just stick with it long enough. So, you know, that, that's it's as simple as that. And you know this, Deborah. It's, it's just you have to take the first step. You have to commit to doing more than you're doing now. You have to commit to small incremental changes. Uh, you know, because I always say there is no such thing as maintaining. Everybody says, well, I, I'm maintaining. And, and, and that, that's crazy. We we are biological, organic beings. We are getting better or worse every single day. And it's in small incremental amounts, but we are moving in one direction. And, and the goal, the object is to simply make sure you're moving in a direction where you're getting better and not getting worse. And it doesn't take a lot to do that. So good. And I love that you started with, you know, what your day is like and eliminating the possibility that you wouldn't do it. It's making it automatic. I mean, that's it. Like you said, for a short time, something you focus on with uh, some discipline, some commitment for a small period of time, you know, will still be important to you. You'll still be doing it a year from now. And then it becomes more like something you do, like brushing your teeth and you wouldn't think of doing that. I'm hoping listeners are agreeing with me or I'm not sitting beside them either way. So finish the day. This is totally off the cuff, but Mark Middleton is 68. He's the head honcho at Growing Boulder, what's the rest of a day in the life like for someone who wants to do it the best he can? Someone that wants to do what? Do do life the best he can. Uh, you're talking about it for me? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, you know what? I... Uh, I, I, I kind of hesitate to say this, but, you know, I'm a bit of an introvert, um, you know, ha- having been a guy in TV. And um, I, I think 
left to my own devices, I wouldn't engage as much as I do. But uh, I, I just, I, we've got a great team here that I love working with. And we are all so passionate uh, about the mission. Uh, the, the, the bad news is we are uh, understaffed and undercapitalized, and we are juggling more balls than we can do. We have some incredibly exciting initiatives underway. We're in the middle of a capital raise right now, and we hope by early next year uh, to be able to to grow our staff from, we have nine full-time employees to, to 50 uh, by the end of the first quarter. And um, there's just so many things that I want to do, uh, so many exciting things that i um, uh, it's uh, it, it's multitasking to the nth degree uh, every every single day, uh, you know, jump, jumping from one project to another. But it's all really exciting. And, you know, it's it, it, this is an age of opportunity for especially for those of us in 20 or 30 years, people will fully understand and embrace what we're talking about now. It will be old news that there is this new opportunity and that we can redefine how we age. And, uh, you know, we can, you know, we, we can create opportunities where there were none before. Uh, so, you know, th- that's my focus. My focus, the 10,000 foot view from the beginning is I want to build a brand uh, that, that resonates with people in a positive way and makes them feel that more is possible. And, uh, you know, it's really the world's first active lifestyle brand for people over the age of, I say over the age of 50, but, you know, one of the cool things that I'm most proud of, Deborah, is, is that, you know, uh, our average user, viewer, listener, reader uh, is a 45 year old woman, um, uh, for, 45 to 55. And in my estimation, that's the most valuable consumer alive because she's making healthcare care decisions for three generations. She's making 83 uh, percent of uh, all household purchases of all over the counter drugs. She purchases 68 percent of all automobiles. And, uh, you know, so that, that's really the sweet spot. And. Uh, and that that's who we end up motivating more than anybody else. So, uh, you know, that my day is every day is different, but every day is fun. I so agree with you. I feel like you were just looking over my shoulder in my notes for a webinar I gave this morning, uh-huh. just relaying those exact same things. And and I think I finished with, you know, and we reach her, we change her world, we change the world. <clears throat> Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that, that's, that, that's where the opportunity is. And uh, you know, I can't tell you how many times I've spoken and a woman will come up to me and said, my God, I wish my husband would have been here. Uh, I wish I could, you know, get my husband to read your book. I wish my husband would do this. So, yeah, it's, uh, you know, women are in particular, you know, lo- looking for uh, what's next. Yeah. Her number one concern is health. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Okay. So let's tease a little bit because we, included it in your introduction, your book, Growing Bolder, Defy the Cult of Youth, Live with Passion and Purpose, was released this year. Tease a little bit. What what are we going to find between the covers? Well, you know, I mean, you're you're kind of in the overall health and well-being and, and fitness uh, area. Uh, I, I gave the keynote at the Functional Aging Institute's uh, annual conference. And yes. there, there, were you there? I was oh, not there. Awesome. I saw it and I was like, ah. Oh. I wish I could go. Well, there were, there were 360 people in the room, and I sold 250 books uh, that day. And uh, ever since then, I, I put a video online. I, if, if nobody else that's listening watches it, I'd love you to, uh, because there, there, there's a personal trainer who lives in my area who's got a gym. Uh, Anytime Fitness is his, is his thing. And he called me up a month after this thing, and he said, Mark, I bought your book and gave it to every one of my staff members. We have read it, and it has totally transformed uh, the way that we deal with our clientele. It's changed our vocabulary. It's the missing piece in what we do. It gives us the way because we all know, we all know that we need to do more. We all know that movement is good for us. We all know we should do these things, but you know, it's so hard to get people to do it. Uh, and he said, this book is transformed my business. And now he started a book club uh, and he's uh, taking it out into the community and people are reading the book and then he's, you know, recruiting them into his gym. So what do you get out of the book? I mean, the book is uh, it, it's a it's a playbook for life and it starts off, you know, very clearly helping us all understand that we have this. I I believe that we've all got two self images. We've got the one that we carry around on a regular basis. And hopefully for the most part, it's pretty good, but we have a internal negative self image 
that we don't know exist until we start to feel the effects of age. And it begins being built when we're very young. And there's been multiple research that shows by the time we're three, uh, kids have a very ageist view of growing older. And there's been studies done with books that were read to us when we were kids and older people are laughed at, they're, they're, non, uh, they're, they're inconsequential to plot. And as we grow older, we look at all of this crap on TV that tells us we're ugly and our wrinkles are terrible and we're losing our hair and, and uh, on and on and on and on. And when we begin to feel the effects of age, this negative internal self-image, you know, starts to exert itself. And again, back to Ellen Langer uh, and everybody else, you know, what the mind believes the body embraces. And, you know, and, and so if we really want to change our future, if we really want to have an impact on our life, we have to change our belief system. Uh, the, the number one determinant of how we age is not genetics, uh, it is lifestyle. And the number one lifestyle determinant of how we age is not diet and it's not exercise. It is our belief system. And that's where the game has to be played. You know, we have to help people. Uh, I mean, you know, when you're working with clients, uh, uh, you know, you can go through the motions of uh, of exercising. But if at the same time you are thinking about uh, how this is going to help you, if you're if you understand that the power of visualization, if you know, there's so many things that we're not doing that we can't. Uh, you, you, you get the understanding that you do uh, control to a large extent how you age. And it goes all the way up, if I can, it, it, it goes up to with how you die. Because I think in this culture, we're afraid to talk about dying. And if any one of us were ever going to get out of here alive, it'd be a conversation I wouldn't want to have. But since none of us will, uh, you know, there is such a thing as a good death. And I've talked to people in hospice and I've, uh, you know, tried to understand what makes for a good death. And again, bad things happen to good people. But if we can control uh, how we age and how we leave this this plane, uh, to, to some extent, I'm all about that. So I think this book takes you all the way through there. And uh, it, it's 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 more than anything else. It's positive um, and a little provocative. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. So listeners, I've got you covered. I know you're either walking, you're lifting, or you're driving, and we've got that in the show notes for sure. Last question, Mark, for you, probably not a, a hard thing to do for other other guests sometimes. Is there a question I should have asked you? No, but there's a question I'd like to ask you. Oh, that's not fair. No. Um, what got you into what you're doing and, and, and what attracted you to wanting to talk to, to me? You know, well, I love what you do. I really love the positive message. I feel like we're we're on the same train, going the same direction with the same mission. That's why I wanted to talk to you. And you, uh, this last 30 minutes has reinforced that. So um, just, just letting you know that. But, you know, I was fortunate long before I knew I was fortunate. I was raised by older parents mm. who, you know, spent time with my friend's grandparents and I resented it along the way. And I had older siblings. And so by the time I got to college and I was working with adults, say in the exercise clinic, they were giving me the older clients, you know, cause other students didn't want them. And I, you know, they resonated with me. I was very comfortable with them and they with me. So I, I was doing research on, on aging before I knew I was. And, and then I thought I got it, thought I was doing a great job. And then I turned 49 and I realized, oh yeah, there's a few things I didn't quite get. Now I do. And um, so when I kept hearing over and over from women in that 45 to 55 year old demographic, nobody understands us. Even my doctor's telling me, well, you know, what do you expect? You're getting older, you know, and it, mm. welcome to menopause as if, you yeah. know, the next 50 years don't really matter, you know, <laughs> and this is it. And I was like, there's got to be a better way. And so I was listening to demand and hearing it and realized I did a study on myself. You know, I left to have a bigger reach and very much like you said, okay, goodbye, paycheck, you know, T-I-A-A Cref and all of the perks and um, said, I'm all in to building a digital business to have a bigger reach for more women with a different voice. And, and then I panicked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, so, I, you know, I am going to start paying tuition in eight months. Um, that's, that's a precocious place to be in. 
So I realized that the exercise prescription, you know, traditional and conventional are sometimes lies. So I began to develop a hormone balancing approach. And that really leads to, you know, in the entire 50 years we have left, it's still all about hormones that are dictating how we feel, how we think. And yet it is believing that we have the power to change that has to come first. I'm, you know, an exercise psychologist trained. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, above the shoulders matters first before you can get below the shoulders. Amen to that. Now, I I think that's great. And it will be a uh, a disaster, maybe too strong of a word, but I'll use it. It'll be a disaster, uh, Deborah Atkinson, if we don't continue to uh, uh, stay connected and work together. Well, I would love that. And thank you again for your time. Listeners, Mark shared with me in the green room, if you will. He had a cold, but he still, the show must go on. And it did, and you probably would not ever have found that he did. So, listeners, if you have a question that I didn't ask, please leave it below the show link at flipping50.com forward slash, of course, growing older. Love hearing from you. And if this episode was helpful, please leave a ring in iTunes and then share this with a friend. Surround yourself with a supportive community of women on the same journey. To get the most from this week's episode and the links that Mark and I talked about, again, it's today's show notes at flipping50.com forward slash growing dash folder, where you'll find the juicy free download and resources mentioned on today's show. What are you waiting for? Let's start flipping 50 together.